Hello, Joseph. Welcome to Santa Fe. All right, thank you. Please introduce yourself. Uh, Joe's Pierce um, from Mosswood Farm Store in Micanopy. Um, yeah, thanks for having me today. A pleasure to have you. Joseph, what is this spiky vegetable? Yeah, so that's called a spiny or spiky chayote. Uh, Cesium edul is the Latin name for that. It's also called uh, choco, merlitan, depending on where you're at. And um, it's a perennial squash. It's related to the cucumber. Um, can grow 50 to 100 fruit on one vine every year for four or five years. It grows back every year. There are many different varieties. Um, these are just the two more common varieties, the spiny and the smooth variety that you would find in the grocery stores. Um, it's got a mild flavor, can be cooked any way you like, um, from sweetened and made to a pear type cobbler or like a summer squash, savory type dish. Very nutritious, lots of vitamins and minerals. Um, fairly easy to grow. And little calories, right? Yeah, very little calories, that's right. Oh, wonderful. <clears throat> the spiky, I won't touch it again. Yeah, it's and not very friendly. Oh, <laughs> this crop uh, grows uh, originally in South America. And what about this? What, what is that? So, cassava. Um, this one is um, Maniot esculenta in this Latin. And it is native to South America as well. It's developed by the Inca, as far as I know. And it's been a staple crop there for thousands of years and you can eat the leaves when they're cooked you can eat the roots cooked dried powdered any way you like but they are toxic if they're not cooked there is a small amount of cyanide so they have to be cooked but just like regular potatoes they also have to be cooked okay. very now easy to grow in poor soil now we know now we know and now we know i gotta cook them and do you think i can grow this in my backyard i think so we're going to plant that in this yard and you can take some home and plant them in your yard and i think that you will have some success yeah Wonderful, let's try it out. It doesn't need much water. It likes dry soil and sandy soil, which is kind of what we're dealing with right here. And we are facing north here. I believe south would be behind me. So we have sunrise to my right and a very wide open space where we're getting sun basically until right now. So that's the first half of the day. That's the minimum amount of sun you would want to give this plant. It could do with full sun. It will produce a little bit more in full sun, but it will also require a little bit more water. So in a shady-ish spot like this where it will get more sun as it goes on in the afternoon, gets later sun, so we'll be, we'll be in full sun again, even though we're in shade right now. So this is a pretty good spot, mostly sun. Some shady, mostly sun. Right. Water it every day. You want to water it every day for the first little while while it's getting growing, but then it can survive on rainwater and it doesn't need regular irrigation. But just like any food crop, the more you take care of it, the more it's going to grow. So fertilizer and regular water will create more production. But we could stick it in the ground right here and do pretty much nothing to it and it would still grow. It just wouldn't produce as much. Perfect. Right? Well, I think I can probably do it with this. All we got to do is open up a spot and you can see how there's very little root on this but it's alive, it's got some growth and it's got some roots on there. So we're just going to slide this in the ground here in that little spot that I made. Just like that? Just like that. It's not all. We got to water it and then we should come back and, and give it some compost. See we've got the compost bin right there. So we'll make a little ring of compost right here and water this in and that way somebody will be able to see it they won't mow over it and we might even put some rocks or maybe a little circle of some sticks or something around it just so people don't run over it being that it is as small as it is. Joseph that seems too easy. It's pretty easy. Okay. Yeah people make food production a little more complicated than it needs to be. It's pretty easy if you've ever grown anything in a pot Anything like an aloe plant, all you got to do is find the right crop and you can grow some food. Pineapples are really easy. Cassava is really easy. You can even grow these in containers. So anybody can do it if I can do it. So we're mulching to help retain the moisture and the mulch will slowly break down and turn into soil as well and feed the plant. But So this compost is very moist right now and it's full of nutrients. And if I just laid it out on the ground and exposed it to the sun, the sun is going to cook off a lot of those nutrients and this stuff is going to get dry and it's going to get cakey 
and it's not going to allow the, the nutrients to get into the soil underneath. We want water to start flushing all of this out, and if it got dry and cakey, it's not going to flush out as well. So we're going to cover it with mulch to retain that moisture so when it does get rained on and we water it, that nice gooey, greasy, black plant food that's in this compost will get rinsed into the subsoil and provide food for the roots that are going to start growing off of this plant once it gets established. That was easy. Yeah. Less than 10 minutes and we got two cassava crops growing. That's right. So when can we see them grow? When can we eat them? That's the main question. The best time will be har harvest them in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, so close to the first freeze at the end of the year. Uh, if we don't get a freeze, they can be left in the ground until next year and they'll have bigger roots. But by the end of the year, they could have 35 to 40 pounds of roots on there. And that's a lot of food. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.